Hey YouTube, YTPC, it's Pipe Miner Chris here again. I'm going to do this video because I had uh, done a repair on a stem that had a bite through on it and you know it, it I actually managed to get the stem rebuilt and I've had several different people comment about it and say that they'd like to know how I did it and whatever else so it's going to be easier for me to just do a video and show the techniques and some of the tools that I used that way maybe somebody else can do the same thing and risk you another pipe the most important portion of this was it's this tinted super glue that I found now I found this on amazon.com it comes from a company called Stumac, which is a guitar maker supply house. They've got three different colors of this stuff. It comes in the black that I have, and it comes in a white and an amber. So if you ha even if you've got a different colored stem, you know it's, there aren't very many white ones that I've seen, but there are some amber stems out there. So that, I mean it's possible depending on how closely it matches. To repair not just vulcanite but maybe some of the other materials but anyway when I started I'd, I'd shown pictures of this stem and stuff before but you know the, the whole bottom of this stem was had a bite through clear down into here you know and it was it just needed repair it was a cheap pipe figured I can't screw it up. I mean, it ain't gonna hurt the value if I get a bunch of glue on it or anything like that. So I wasn't too worried about it. But I'll show you. I may have to zoom in on this. Oops. This glue is, it is a very runny, very thin super glue. So, it, you know, in order to get a bite through taken care of, I have to have something that's considerably more usable than this. Because I, I was starting to try to work with this stuff and it would just, I'd put a couple of drop, uh, drops on and it would just run off and I wasn't having much luck at all with that. So I needed a thickening agent, and the only thing I had around here is, uh, get everything going the right way, cornstarch. I thought, well, you know, <laughs> it's all I've got, so we'll give it a shot. Well, I'll show you how quickly this stuff works. And all I did is just, I reached into the can and just, then sprinkle a little bit on If you stir it up, you can see how quick it starts to make a noticeable difference in it now. What I have, what I did find with this stuff though, is since you're adding white powder, in this case to black glue, would, you know, everybody knows it's going to turn gray. <laughs> Well, that caused some headaches for me in the process. I ended up having to do a little more sanding in some cases, and I had I had to put a top coat of just the plain glue on, you know, trying to get it, make sure that everything was black, because it, that gray was going to stand out like a sore thumb on a black stem. But all I did was build this up to the point where. You know, it gets thick enough that you could actually kind of stick it on the uh, stem where the bite through was and actually get it to build up. See, like this. Now it's now it's really kind of sticking. I could work with that because that'll, that'll build up right there. And it doesn't set very fast. It's got a long curing time on it because I would... Usually I'd come home and I'd do 
this portion of it in the morning and I'd, I'd put the glue on and I'd let it set and then in the afternoon when I'd wake up I'd start working with shaping it. Well what I had to the other thing that I had seen in the article that I had no idea about was on your stem where you've got your bite through you need some kind of a backing plate or something to put this glue on that's just a nail file and it was like two bucks at Walmart just a normal nail file but that nail file happens to taper on the end of this nail file happens to fit the normal funnel size in a bit so you put the nail file, you actually have to coat the nail file with Vaseline or petroleum jelly or whatever. And all I did with that was I just took the nail file and dipped it into the Vaseline. You don't want a whole bunch on there, but you want enough that the glue can't get to the nail file because otherwise it will set up on here. But I stuck the nail file in there and then this portion in here that was gone, I just started laying this stuff you know not once I had it thick I just started laying the glue in there and just kind of rolling it in and letting it build up and I had a pile there so I'd leave it sit like that let it cure and then in the afternoon I'd come out and something else that you'll find that you're gonna probably want if you're gonna do these bite throughs is a set of these needle files now I found this set, we've got a hobby st store in town that deals with, uh, it's called Hobby Town USA. They do models, you know, like the plastic models of cars and model rockets and RC cars and stuff and airplanes. But it's just a small needle file set. But the upside to these, you know, I'll get them out. There's several different profiles on these files, but the one I used the most was this little, it's just a flat rectangular profile and then they've got one in here that's a, uh, this one, <clears throat> that's a round shape. And these happen to be, you know, the right size to fit down in the button so you can funnel that stem back out and get it all opened up the way it's supposed to be and get the angle in there and everything else so that it's got a good draw on it again but uh, I use those little files on the on the inside of the stem and on the outside to reshape the button do do the rough work on reshaping that and then of course you know, I've got my whole assortment of sandpapers. And I'd take it up. I went all the way up. By the time I was ready to polish it, you know, I did some work with the 320, but I did most of it with the 600. And I'd do the 600, and then and I worked, up, worked my way up through, a, up through to the 2000. But then I bought a batch of these. These are called micro mesh pads. And these come with, I'll show you the card that comes with them. Here's the card that you get with them that shows the different colors and the grits that are on those pads. And they're a wet dry sander and they go, you know, all the, these go all the way from 1500 grit to 12,000 grit. Now, I always used the 6,000, 8,000, and 12,000 I used dry. The rest of them I used with water. And if you do some looking on YouTube, you can find all kinds of videos of people doing, like, uh, shaping pipe stems and using these on them for acrylic stems and that kind of stuff where they've got them on their lathe and they're using these micro mesh pads to polish them out. And that, by the time I got through with that 12,000 grit, it really did have a pretty good polish on it by that time but it wasn't it you know that's that's what these kind of little deals I found these on Amazon too you can get them 
and this little like two by two size or you can get them in a bigger size and make a couple different sizes of them but after using that then I had a set of uh, buffing wheels that I got and you can get them from <laughs> I learned a lesson on those I bought a couple of these buffing wheels from Menards and they are they were cheap and I got exactly what I paid for I got cheap buffing wheels <clears throat> there's a couple of those the Menards ones that as I'm using them I'm just I mean they are flinging string everywhere I also bought a couple from Vermont Freehand the Vermont Freehand wheels are really nice they didn't I didn't lose any material off of them so I'm going to replace the ones that I got from Menards with the ones that I got well I'm going to get more from Vermont Freehand which you know I've learned that lesson more than once in my life that you get what you pay for especially when you're buying tools but that's I used uh, I actually used four wheels and I used a went over everything once with Tripoli and that puts a bit of a shine on it then I hit it with a white diamond and that really starts to polish it and then I put hit it with uh, Carnuba and the layer of Carnuba is what gives that real shine that depth to your stems that, that that's what makes it give it that kind of wet shine because <clears throat> it was shiny before but that Carnuba really does make a difference so I put that on and then I used another just plain wheel and did a final buff on it and that really did kind of help clean it up and make everything shiny again so but like I said I just I wanted to put out a video on this and you know if you find a pipe basket laying in a basket someplace in a state pipe on eBay or something that has a bite through you don't necessarily have to be afraid I and mean, you can obviously you can rebuild a bite through and it doesn't matter if it's just a small hole or if it's got the whole you know one side or the other all gone <clears throat> it's just a matter of how much time you want to put into it now this one this one's not perfect I mean I can see where the repairs are on it but I don't have very much money into the stem or into the pipe so I didn't care it's not a big deal to me it was just I wanted to learn to do the restoration I wanted something cheap to start with and this one worked so you know, now I've got a completely smokable pipe for well I've got 20 bucks in the pipe and then you know I've spent a fair share on buying the sandpaper and whatever else but you know the tools you buy them once you've got them forever it's no big deal but anyway that should uh, I guess if anybody has questions I've, I've talked to Maritime Piper a little bit about this on Voxer I talked to a few other guys you know and, but like I said I had I had several questions about how'd you do that and where did you find the stuff so I just figured I'd put it out here for everybody and it's all available like I said this I found the original article that suggested that you could repair stems just by googling vulcanite stem repair and this article from reborn pipes came up and that's where I got the original idea and just ran with it and now I've got a usable pipe and I know now that if I see a pipe in a brick and mortar or someplace that has a bite through it's just as fixable as another one so anyway that's all I had for that one so remember life is short stop and smell the smoke <laughs>